The story of the Saunders Row SR A1 begins in the Second World War. The Japanese has shown the effective use of equipping fighter aircraft with floats, with designs such as the Nakajima A6 M2N, which was essentially a float plane version of the famous Zero Fighter. The Allies would use many larger float planes and even some smaller general purpose ones, but the idea of utilising as a fighter was not employed. The British had shown interest in the concept, equipping a few Spitfires with floats, however nothing had come of it. Solander's Row, an aircraft manufacturer based on the Isle of Wight, who had a fair bit of experience with flying boats, began looking at the possibility of designing a float plane fighter aircraft. Design work began in early 1943 with the idea of providing the British with a fast float plane fighter specifically for use within the Pacific Theatre. As design work began, the company was bolstered with the arrival of Sir Arthur Gouge, ex-chief designer from Short Brothers, a company who also had significant experience building flying boats. By December 1943, a proposal had been written up and submitted to the Ministry of Aircraft Production. In May 1944, Saunders Row received a contract for three prototypes to be built to specification E644. The new fighter aircraft would be powered by turbojet engines, which were beginning to emerge. Early on in the project, Saunders Row began working with Metropolitan Vickers, who by 1944 were already testing their gas turbine engines on the prototype of what would become the Meteor Fighter. Additionally, the aircraft would be designed as a seaplane rather than a float plane, as this would improve the aerodynamics of the aircraft and provide better fuel economy, something that was important for early jet aircraft which were known to drink fuel very quickly. Significant design went into the design of the hull, so to limit the amount of water that could get through the air intake. The resulting design received the designation SRA1, and to those working on the type was nicknamed Squirt. It was to be powered by two Metro Vickers F24 barrel axial flow turbojets capable of producing 3,850 pounds of thrust each and aligned side by side in the fuselage. At the front of the aircraft, above the air intake, it was planned to install four 20mm cannons, while underneath each wing, it was capable of carrying a 1,000 pound bomb or eight rockets or an extra fuel tank. It is important to note that the SRA-1 never flew with armament installed. The wings also featured retractable wing floats. Maximum speed was estimated at 500 miles per hour and a ceiling of around 43,000 feet. Construction of the first prototype was already underway in 1945. However, the project was never considered a top priority and with the war ending in the Pacific in mid-1945, the demand for such an aircraft dropped significantly. Work, while it continued, progressed slowly. Eventually, on the 16th of July, 1947, with Geoffrey Tyson at the controls, the first prototype, TG-263, took to the skies for its maiden flight. The aircraft was said to have good handling characteristics, although pilot visibility was not the best. Famous test pilot Eric Winkle Brown, who flew one of the later prototypes, also mentions in his autobiography that the aircraft was not the easiest of things to take off in. Two months following the first flight, the first prototype was being displayed as part of a show put on by the Society of British Aerospace Companies. In another instance, both engines failed during testing, with the pilot managing to pull off a successful landing. The second aircraft, TG-267, first flew on the 30th of April 1948 with uprated barrel engines. This was followed a few months later with the third prototype, TG-271, on the 17th of August 1948. However, the SRA-1 program would suffer two major setbacks in 1949 when both of these prototypes were lost. Firstly, in August 1949, TG-267 was lost when upon landing the aircraft hit a submerged object and sunk. The flight was being piloted by Eric Winkle Brown, who during the flight took the aircraft into a dive and reached Mach 0.82. The flight had been progressing well when as he prepared for landing, a sudden wind change meant that he had to land 90 degrees parallel to the direction he had taken off from. With not enough fuel to circle first and ensure the landing zone was clear, he put the aircraft down in the water. As they ran along the water, he hit a large piece of wood which cracked open the hull of the aircraft. After cartwheeling a few times, the aircraft came to a stop and began to sink. 
Bram would have been lost with the aircraft if it wasn't for the effort of Jeffrey Tyson on an airby launch, who dived in fully closed and rescued Brown from the sinking wreck. The aircraft sunk to the bottom of the river, never to be recovered. Then, during September, while practicing for an air show, the third prototype was lost when the aircraft entered a dive and crashed into the sea just off the coast of Felixstowe. Tragically, pilot squadron leader Major was killed in this incident. These incidents were significant setbacks to the program. Additionally, problems were arising as Metro Vickers had pulled out of development of gas turbine engines, and thus the barrel engines were not going to enter production. With interest from the RAF also waning, the development seriously slowed down and came to a halt with the sole remaining prototype put into storage. With the outbreak of the Korean War, there came renewed interest in the project, not just from the British, but interest also came from the Americans. In November 1950, the prototype was pulled out of storage, and during this time there were discussions to redesign the aircraft to take a single Sapphire 3 turbojet in case production did start. However, this idea never came to fruition. The renewed interest quickly started to drop off as it was found that current carrier and land-based fighters possessed just as good or better performances. This would mark the end of the SRA-1 program. In June 1951, with civilian markings, it was flown up the Thames to London as part of the Festival of Britain celebrations. This would seem to mark the end of the flying career of the SRA-1. The sole remaining prototype, however, after going through a series of owners and losing one of his engines to help power Donald Campbell's world record-breaking speedboat, the Bluebird K7, is today still on display at the Solent Sky Museum. The SR-A1 was quite an interesting and unique concept. Ultimately, the need for a float plane fighter never arose, with carrier aircraft proving to be capable of projecting air power across the sea. Thus, the SR-A1 became another one of those one-off oddities. <laughs>